Welcome into Radio Row in Minnesota for Super Bowl 52. Courtney Cox joined now by Daryl Moose Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, Courtney. Uh, you're a three-time Super Bowl champ, so a week like this, you can relate to a lot of the players. What's that feeling like as a player in Super Bowl week? Well, the, the biggest challenge for everybody is trying to keep it as normal as you possibly can, which is virtually impossible because there's nothing normal about your time in the host city. So you try to get as much of the media obligations and the things that are pre-Super Bowl out of the way before Tuesday evening. I think you saw a lot of the players yesterday on Wednesday kind of breathe a sigh of relief and yes. say, so happy to get back to practice. And it's a little bit of normalcy and get into that routine. And we all talk about being creatures of habit. I don't think anybody more so than, than athletes and football players especially. We like to get into that routine. So yesterday, the Eagles and the Patriots finally got back into that normal routine. And then it'll be a challenge for them and their staff to keep it as normal as they possibly can, to understand that the reason we're here is Sunday. Let's take care of business. Then you guys go do whatever you want, but let's not celebrate a little bit too early and miss out on an opportunity. Sunday is the big day, and we are right around the corner. You're now a football analyst, so you know this game better than anybody else. What do you see in this Eagles-Patriots matchup, and are the Eagles that much of an underdog? You know, I really don't think they are. I, I think the one thing that, that Philadelphia has to do, and we've seen this because of what the Patriots have accomplished last year in the Super Bowl and this year in the AFC Championship game. You've got to stay aggressive for 60 minutes when you play the Patriots. We saw it last year in the Super Bowl against Atlanta. It's 25 to three. There were plays for Atlanta to make in that second half that would have prevented New England from getting back because it would have taken time away from them. And I think everybody felt when that game got to 16 points, a two possession game, that Atlanta was in trouble. And sure enough, they were. And the same thing happened against Jacksonville in the AFC Championship game. At 10 down in the fourth quarter, I think there's a lot of people that said they're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. And as fans and as people that watch the game, if we're saying that, just think what they're believing as players. So now they've created this belief that they can come back from anything. So Doug Peterson and his staff will have to stay aggressive for 60 minutes during the course of the game. Minimize your mistakes. I mean, New England is fantastic at capitalizing on a mistake. Something as simple as what Jacksonville had with that delay game penalty right before the end of the half. That should be 14-3 at worst going into halftime, uh, potentially 17-3 or 21-3. It ends up being 14-10. That's a huge deal for New England. And then the one thing that, that New England does better than anybody, I think, especially through the, the Tom Brady era, is they don't beat themselves. Yes. So you're going to have to take this game away from New England. They're not going to give you an opportunity. So being aggressive, uh, you know, the defense is going to have to come up with some type of big play, maybe something in special teams. But you're going to have to force New England into making a mistake because they won't do it on their own. Well, you're here with Liberty Tax, like your shirt says, yes. uh, this Super Bowl week. Talk about that partnership and how you got involved. You know, it's been a great uh, relationship. Uh, we went out in November, late November, after Thanksgiving, and we tried to uh, to get everybody aware of the fact that, you know, let's, let's be early with tax season. Let's get our tax plan in place right now and, and be able to file for the early routine or return and we'll be able to get you some money on January 6th. So we, we, we got some people to do that. And now we're here again, we're incentivizing people to continue to be forward thinking, get that tax plan in place early. So this time what we're doing is if if you go to the hashtag, if you use the hashtag Liberty Tax Double, uh, when you file your taxes with Liberty Tax and tweet out uh, what you're going to do with the money if we were to double your return up to $2,500 or if we were to give you the money up to $2,500 to pay your taxes, what you would do with that. And we're going to pick two winners from that uh, and, and actually fulfill that obligation. So there's a potential for you to have your tax return doubled up to $2,500 or actually be given $2,500 to help you pay your taxes and do other things with it. Uh, and then every time you send out that tweet with the hashtag Liberty Tax Double, it's going to trigger a donation to the USO. Uh, Ed Bruno, the CEO of Liberty Tax, has a military background, went to West Point, uh, so he's always doing great things for the military. So we're going to try to raise some money for the, US, uh, the USO as well. So a good cause as great well. Great cause, yeah. We are based up in the Northeast, so we're very familiar with our northern schools in the U.S. You went to Syracuse. When you look at their season, Dino Babers, how do yes. you like what he's doing with that program? I think he's he's got the offensive side of it figured out. You know, he likes to try and squeeze five quarters into four quarters of football, and, and I think offensively the progress has been substantial. Um, you know, probably still looking for that that key quarterback. Uh, I heard they've got a new transfer coming in from Oklahoma, uh, so you've got a big time player that was at a school that's going to come back east and, and, and play football for him. Now it's to kind of focus on the defensive side of the ball. And being somebody that's down in Texas, I see this back and forth in the Big 12 all yes. the time. It's like basketball scores. It's you know 68, 62, 72, Sir. you know 65. It's crazy. So you've got to kind of get away from that and, and get that defense going. But the one thing I will say about Dino Babers is when he went to Syracuse, my concern was. 
how are you going to find these guys to play this this spread type offense? You know, from the Northeast, it's going to be hard to recruit somebody to come to Central New York who's not used to that kind of climate. Right. You sit down with Dino Babers, and it's amazing. His yes. passion, his charisma that he has. Uh, I can see him going into the living room of a family in, in Florida, in Texas, and convincing their son that Syracuse is a great opportunity, you know, athletically and academically. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what Dino does next year. I really am.